This is the future. Chapter 1 Rick was drunk. Not enough to matter, but enough not to matter, he thought, staring at the ruby wine casting blood shadows in the lead crystal glass. A log fire in the hearth warmed his back. Sorry everyone! He pulled his blue cloak more tightly about his shoulders. He did not need to be able to hear the words to know the topic of every conversation. It had been the same for days. War. More laughter burst upon the room. Barbarians! roared a voice above the babble. Easy meat for the Draenei lancers. More laughter. I am not a fool. Not yet. Horeb the innkeeper kept a weary eye over the crowd, alert for trouble, ready to step in with a word and a smile before a snarl and a fist becomes necessary. War. What is it about the prospect of such bloody enterprise that reduce men to the level of animals? He scanned the large room, warming as they lighted upon his daughters, Dory, Besa, and Nessa. Then his gaze fell on a tall figure in a blue cloak, seated by the window. Damn you, Rick! Snap out of it! Horeb removed a bottle of port and went to sit next to Rick. A problem shared is a problem doubled. A friend need is a friend to be avoided. I knew a general once, never lost a battle, never won one either. How so? You know the answer. I've told you before. I have a bad memory. Anyway, I like to listen to your stories. How could he never lose and never win? He surrendered whenever threatened. Clever, huh? How come men follow him if he never won? Because he never lost, neither did they. Would you have followed him? I don't follow anyone anymore, least of all generals. Listen to them. Listen to their talk of glory. They don't know any better wreck, my friend. They haven't seen it, tasted it. Crows like a black cloud over a battlefield, feasting on the dead men's eyes. Foxes jerking at serried tendons. Worms, stop it. Don't you... I don't need reminding. Well, I'm damned if I'll go. When's Nessa getting married? In three days. He's a good boy. He look after her. Keeps baking her cakes. She'll be like a tub before long. One way or another. Indeed, yes. <laughs> The first attack will be at Drosdal Noch. Do you know they've only 10,000 men there? I heard it was less than that. Abelin's been cutting back on the regulars and concentrating on militia. Still, there's six high walls and a strong keep, and Dalnar's no fool. He was at the Battle of Scalum. Really? I heard that was one man against 10,000 hurling mountains on the foe. The saga of Drus, the legend. The tale of a giant whose eyes were death and whose axe was terror. Gather around, children, and keep from the shadows, lest evil lurk as I tell my tale. You bastard. That used to terrify me. You knew him, didn't you? The legend, I mean. A long time ago. They say he's dead. If not, he must be over 60. We were in three campaigns together, but I only spoke to him twice. I saw him in action once, though. 
Was it good? Awesome! It was just before Skarn and the defeat of the Immortals. Just a skirmish really. Yes, he was very, very good. You're not terribly strong on detail, Horeb. You want me to sound like the rest of those fools? Jabbering about war and death and slaying? No. No, I don't. You know me, don't you? Enough to like you, regardless. Regardless of what? Regardless of the fact that you don't like yourself. On the contrary, I like myself well enough. It's just that I know myself better than most people. You know, Rick, sometimes I think you ask too much of yourself. No, no, I ask very little. I know my weaknesses. It's a funny thing about weakness. Most people will tell you they know their weakness. When asked, they tell you, well, for one thing, I'm over generous. Come on then, list yours if you must. That's what innkeepers are for. Well, for one thing, I'm over generous, especially to innkeepers. <sighs> too intelligent to be a hero, too frightened to be a coward. I'm not a fool. Damn, the drink finally got to me. Let me give you a hand to your room. Is there a candle lit? Of course! You won't let it go out on me, will you? Not keen on the dark. Not frightened, you understand, just don't like it. I won't let it go out, Rick. Trust me. I trust you. I rescued you, don't I? Remember? I remember. Give me your arm. I'll guide you to the stairs. This way. That's good. One foot in front of the other. Good. I didn't hesitate. Straight in with my sword raised, didn't I? Yes. No, I didn't. I stood for two minutes shaking, and you got cut. But you still came in, Rick. Don't you see? It didn't matter about the cut. You still rescued me. It matters to me. Is there a candle lit in my room? No. I gotta get away. No. No, please don't. No. No. Shh. Calm down. You're safe. You were troubled in the night. I'm not troubled now. How could I be? The warmth of her body aroused him. And his fingers caressed her back. Not today. She kissed him lightly on the forehead and pulled away. She threw back the quilt, shivered and ran across the room, gathering her clothes. It's cold. Colder than yesterday. It's warm in here. You're fine to romp with, Rick. But I'll have no children by you. Now get out of bed. We have a party of travelers coming in this morning and the room is late. You're a beautiful woman, Besa. If I had any sense, I'd marry you. Then it's a good job you have none, for I'd turn you down and your ego would never stand it. I'm looking for someone more solid. The door opened and Horeb bustled in bearing a copper tray containing bread, cheese and a tankard. How's the head? Fine. Is that orange juice? It is. And it'll cost you dear. Nessa waylaid the vagrian trader as he left the ship. She waited an hour and risked frostbite just to get oranges for you. I don't think you're worth it. True. Sad but true. Are you really heading south today? Mm-hmm. You're a fool. I thought you'd had enough of Reynard. I'll avoid him. Are my clothes cleaned? Dory spent hours on them. And for what? So that you can get them filthy in Graven Forest? That's not a point. One should always look one's best when leaving a city. I can't face the cheese. Doesn't matter. It's still on the bell. In that case, I'll force myself to eat it. Any other travelers today? 
There's a spice caravan heading for Lantria that will go through Graven. 20 men, well armed. They're taking the circular route south and west. There's a woman traveling alone, but she's already left. Lastly, there's a group of pilgrims, but they don't leave until tomorrow. A woman? Not quite, but almost. Now girl, it's not like you to be chatty. A tall girl with a fine horse, and she's armed. I could have traveled with her. It might have made the journey more pleasant. And she could have protected you from Reinhardt. She looked the part. Now come on, Ragnak. Get dressed. I've not the time to sit here and watch you breakfast like a lord. You've caused enough chaos in this house. I can't get up while you're here. It wouldn't be decent. You idiot. Get him up, father. Else he'll lie there all day. She's right, Rick. It's time for you to move. And knowing how long it takes you to prepare for your public appearance, I think I'll leave you to get on with it. One must look one's best when leaving a city, I know. That's what you always say, Rick. I'll see you downstairs. Once alone, Rick's manner changed, the laughter lines about his eyes easing into marks of tension, sorrow almost. The Drenai were finished as a world power. Ulrich and the Nadir tribes had already begun their march upon Drenan, and they would ride into the cities of the plains on rivers of blood. The world was changing, and Rick was running out of places to hide. He thought of Horeb and laughed. Whatever happens, there is one old man who will survive. The winter wind struck his bed-warmed body, snatching his mind back to reality of today and the long ride south. He crossed to the bench on which his clothes had been laid out and swiftly dressed. By the wardrobe stood a full-length mirror where Rick took a long look at his reflection. What a hero! What a gem of a hero! Whatever else you are not, you are a swordsman. You may not actually be magnificent, but by all the gods in Masael, you look it. Don't you mock me, Ragnar Wanderer. Now that's more like it, Rick, my lad. You could have stepped straight from one of Cerber's perms. Drink? No, I think I will leave it a while yet. Like, ten years? Last night's brew is still fermenting in my gullet. Have you packed me some of your vile food for the journey? Macadie biscuits, Moldway cheese, and a dear old bag of bacon that will come when you call it. And a flask of the worst? Ugh. Silver for your future? Why do they do it? The eyes, you mean? Yes. How can a man put out his own eye? Damned if I don't. They say it aids their vision. Sounds about as senile as cutting off your staff in order to aid your sex life. It takes all sorts, horrible old friend. Silver for your future? Go on, Rick. See if the journey bodes well. Where's the harm? You pay. I will listen. Here, old man. For my friend here. I know my future. The old man squatted on the wooden floor and reached into a tattered pouch, producing a fistful of sand which he sprinkled about him. Then he produced six knuckle bones bearing crafted ruins. The human bones, aren't they? So they say. The old man began to chant in the elder tongue. He threw the bones to the sandy floor, then ran his hands over the ruins. I have the truth. Never mind the truth, old man. Give me a tale full of golden lies and glorious maidens. I have the truth. The hell with it. Tell me the truth, old man. Do you desire to hear it, man? Never mind the damn ritual. Just speak and be gone. Danny Rick, it's his way. Maybe, but he's going a long way towards spoiling my day. They never give good news anyway. The old bastard probably going to tell me I shall catch the plague. He wishes the truth, and will use it wisely, and well. Indeed, he does not, and will not. But destiny must be heard. You do not wish to hear words of your death, Ragnak, the wanderer, son of Argus, and so I will withhold them. 
You are a man of uncertain character and only a sporadic courage. You are a thief and a dreamer and your destiny will both haunt and hunt you. You will run to avoid it, yet your steps will carry you towards it. But then this you know, Long Shanks, for you dreamt it yestereve. Is that it, old man? The meaningless garbage? Is that fair trading for a silver coin? The Earl and the legend will be together at the wall, and men shall dream, and men shall die. But shall the fortress fall? What was your dream last night, Rick? You surely don't believe that idiocy, Horeb. What was your dream? I didn't dream at all. I slept like a log. Except for that bloody candle. You left it on all night and it stank. You must be more careful. You could have started a fire. Every time I stop here, I warn you about those candles. You never listen. That's the end of chapter one. Thanks again guys for watching this video. For the guys who reached the end, <laughs> well well done. The chapter did take a bit long, but I think it's going to be more or less the same time for each and every chapter. So, if you guys want to see the next one, or at least listen to the next one, let's make sure that we can get at least 20 views. And believe me, this story becomes more and more exciting as it unfolds. Once again guys, until next time, whatever you do, keep it safe. Cheers.